One of the most challenging skills to master as an American Mahjong player is how to pick a hand. In the previous video, we did some random pulls to demonstrate how to identify the strength in a dealt hand because that is where it all begins. The next step is to prepare for the Charleston. The purpose of the Charleston is to strengthen your starting position going into the pick and discard phase of the game. In this video, we're going to do some Charleston modeling to demonstrate how to pick a hand three ways. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to be non-dealer for each iteration. So I'll get 13 tiles, then create a mock Charleston with no jokers. In this iteration, we're going to use a fixed style of play, which means we're going to pick the hand before the Charleston. The benefit of this style is that you'll be able to commit to one hand and focus on the tiles needed for that hand alone. For this set of tiles, we have no multiples. We have a flower, northeast, white dragon, dots, bams, cracks. We do have two eights, but I also think about a year hand anytime we have a white dragon and year tiles. We could maybe play a year hand. The challenge here is we have no dragons other than the white dragon but we do have half of news almost the whole block of 2019 we just need a one and a flower for maybe the concealed hand we could potentially use this as the dragon if we have dots we would need cracks and bams let's pick a year hand concealed year hand here and see how this goes so we'll pass one of each suit Oh, two eights. Let's give up an eight right now so that we have two good passes. Sometimes I like to think a pass ahead. So let's pass these. No keepers. Let's pass these three. There's a flower. We have a pair in here now fives but we have more year tiles than we do the pair i think we should go ahead and break that up and stick with the year plus we picked a hand we're going to stick with it we picked a hand we'll stick with it we've got an east and a west so we picked up a wind we really don't need a second east we need news so we need a south what we really need here is a red or a green dragon. So let's pass these three. There's a red dragon. And we have three tiles to pass. We've got a south. This hand, we need a red dragon and a one dot. We'll pass one blind. We have everything we need right now. We're going to pass one blind, no keepers, but we do have two tiles for the optional cross. No keepers. Pair, news, 2019, we need a one dot and red dragons. Two discards, which is a pretty good result after the Charleston. The liability here is if you don't get the tiles you need for that one hand, you'll have a lot of work to do going into the pick and discard phase of the game, but it definitely takes the pressure off knowing what hand to focus on. Let me know your thoughts about 
the fixed style of play, picking a hand before the Charleston. In this iteration, we're going to use an adaptive style of play, which means we'll pick a category, then gather tiles for that category until we run out of discards, then we'll pick a hand. The benefit of this style is it gives you the greatest flexibility as the game progresses. For these tiles, we have multiples, dragons, sixes. We do have three, six, three, nine. I think that is the strength of this hand and we may even be able to use the dragon. So I would give up those tiles and focus on three, six, nine category level. We're not gonna pick a hand till we run out of discards. Right now we have four discards. Right now, I'm gonna consider all these keepers. There are one, two, there are two hands that use dragons in 369. The first one is one suit, so we could maybe play this hand, the first one, or there's a mixed suit knitted hand, which would be this one. Flower, three, six, nine, matching dragon for the middle number. That's called knitted because it goes in and out, weaves. So I would gather for three, six, nine and leave my options open. Being adaptive. That gives you the greatest flexibility. So let's do the Charleston. We got a three, we'll keep it. We have three tiles to pass. No keepers. We've got a six. We have two tiles to pass. For the adaptive style of play, you gather all the tiles for your category, no matter what the number is or what the suit is, till you run out of discards. And right now we have two discards. So we need to pick a hand or whittle down our options to release more discards because we, we're, we're on the going into the optional Charleston. But I would not stop the Charleston because we don't know what hand we're playing yet. So we're going to whittle down our options. Three, six. I think we should maybe go ahead and play three, six, nine knitted right here. I don't think we're gonna be able to use the dragon. Let's give up the red dragon and still stay flexible with the numbers. We'll keep the white. Let's pass these. So we're still category level. We've got a three. Now we have another multiple. Three, six, nine. We could perhaps play the third hand down now four flowers, Kong of threes in one suit, pair of sixes in a second suit, Kong of nines in a third suit. So that would leverage another multiple. In this case, I think I would go ahead and discard the red again. We still have options. We got a red and a nine. I don't think this nine is gonna be helpful though unless we switch from three, six, nine to three, six, nine. Do you see this? Same hand, only instead of BAMs, 
we're using cracks where we got that multiple. I think that's the way we should go. And then we could maybe do three, six, nine in mixed suits. So I would go ahead and give up the three bam. Focus on the cracks, which is a multiple. No keepers. I would keep the three nine because that's in our category and give up these. Oh, we got the red back. I would discard it though. So we have five discards. We know a hand we could play and we have no gaps. We could still play three, six, nine mixed suits. So I would keep that. Probably I'd say five discards with a choice to be made later, but I would stay flexible at the category level. I would discard these first, keep all the three, six, nine tiles till we run out of discards and then decide on what hand to play. But more likely than not, I would play the knitted hand, which would be the second hand down under three, six, nine. One of the nice things about adaptive is you don't have to choose. Get rid of your discards, then pick a hand. If a tile is discarded, that's when the decision would have to be made. Otherwise, you can stay concealed for the greatest flexibility. I do not see a liability for this style of play. It is very flexible. The longer you stay concealed, the more flexibility you have. The longer you don't pick a hand, the greater flexibility you have. And it's all very situational during the game. You just have to make the right decisions at the right time to make it work. So there is footwork to be done, but we have a hand that we could play, maybe two hands for these tiles. Let me know what you think about the adaptive style of play. This is my preferred way to play. In this iteration, we're going to use a hybrid style where we use the adaptive style of play during the Charleston, then use the fixed style of play after the Charleston and pick a hand. The benefits of this style of play would be flexibility during the Charleston, then a focus on one hand during the pick and discard phase of the game. We have no multiples, but we do have, well, besides the flowers, which we can use everywhere on the card. And we have jokers. So we have East Dragons 278989. I think that is the predominant pattern. Consecutive run, and I would probably try to play a hand with flowers. So I would say consecutive run is where we want to start. We need three tiles to pass, so I would pass those. Hold all the number tiles. You don't even have to look at the card. This is one of the benefits of playing at the category level. You don't have to look at the card to figure out what hand you're going to play. Just gather tiles for whatever category you've chosen. In this case, we're going to do four numbers in a range, six through nine, maybe five through nine in consecutive run. So let's pass these. We've got a flower and a nine. There's our first multiple, nine. We have four flower or three flowers and a nine. There is a consecutive run hand 
that uses mixed suits with a dragon. Nine white, which means we could do eight. Eight, nine dragon. There's some potential for like numbers also. So let's go ahead and focus there. We could maybe even do an addition hand with all these flowers. This is one of the benefits of playing adaptive. Even if you pick a category, you can go into any other category based on the strength of your changing hand through the Charleston. So let's go ahead and pass these three. We got an eight. I think that kind of solidifies it right there. Flowers, eight, nine, dragon. We have three tiles to pass. This is the first left. We got a flower. We have all the tiles we need. I would stop the Charleston. We have only two tiles to pass and our hand is actually set. Four flowers. We've got two pungs, which are potential kongs, and all we need is a pair. So I would stop the Charleston. I would say I want two. I'm going to put my two out here and talk about this for a minute. This goes into another strategy about stopping the Charleston. There's a video on this. Look for strategy by wall. Anytime someone stops the Charleston, you should consider whether or not you want to do an optional cross with them because it means that they're either in between hands and can't decide or they're very close to a winning hand, which is the case here. So for my opponent, if I were sitting in that seat, I would say, no, thank you. I'll keep what I have. So these tiles would stay put. For the sake of the exercise, let's go ahead and do an exchange for optional cross. We didn't get any keepers in this case. It was close though. We got a dragon. But this hand is set. We need to Kong, Kong, ready to win on a white dragon. And in this case, we ended up picking our hand at the end of the Charleston. Each of these styles of play has benefits and liabilities. They all can be successful with good decision making. If you have a set of tiles at home, do Charleston modeling for each of these styles and pick the one that is most comfortable for you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.